Hey, buddy. I'm just going to scoot you over here. And sit right there. All right. So, what's up, guys? Shout out, Willie. Um, basically, what I'm going to do today is talk about the new build that I'm going to be working on. Um, it is winter time, as you can tell. We've got the Christmas lights up. It's snowy and crappy outside. Been whooping a little bit. Got the new Beta uh, 75. Thing is sweet, but now is the time for building. So I've been flying with just one quad. It's a uh, Diatone Tyrant. Um, beat the hell out of it. Replaced everything on it other than the carbon. And uh, just basically been watching the hype train. And you know when you get it, get on the ride on the hype train lately, you've noticed that the big topic is the long range rigs. And it's intriguing. You know I am a hype follower. Gotta love it, but. Where we live here in Idaho, uh, we've got wide open spaces, hills, mountains, trees, rivers, um, not many bandos and the things that are work good for the, uh, the small, you know, five inch racing quad, acrobatic stuff. It seems like what this area really, you know, needs is that long range reach so you can fly along the ridge lines, get the sweeping footage. That's what I want to do. That's my plan. So, uh, long range it is. And I just got in the mail just today in the package with the uh, emblematic yellow tape indicating China. And uh, just got the last portion or the last component, major component of my new quad here. So, what I've got here, let's just, it's already been opened. Isn't that a, True unboxing. Hey, keep it down over there. Hey, Nova. Knock it off. Jeez. Sorry, got a new puppy. Uh, anyway, where was I? Yes, so we've got the new iFlight FPV, and this is the XL7, 7-inch, seven 281-millimeter low-ride FPV freestyle frame. And uh, I saw a few videos on this guy. Looked like it was a decent, you know, reasonably priced thing. It's not, I don't know if it's a clone of anything. I don't, don't really, haven't been following that too much. But looked like it was a decent thing. Let's see what we got in the box here. So I just pulled this open here. Looks like we've got some arms. That's good, four of them. I did uh, kick down for two extra arms and an extra top plate, figuring those would be the most likely to break. But uh, decent looking carbon, really. Like, uh, really nice and smooth. Feels nice, non-chamfered. I mean, it doesn't have that she-she twill carbon, pay $125 for a frame kind of stuff. Uh, we've got all the other plates. Oh, need a, need a knife. Let's see what we got here. Open all this stuff up. So this is this is the the foundation of the new the new rig. I'll go over all the other components that that I'm using to build this sucker here in a minute. But uh, looks like we got little camera mount plates. Top plate, bottom plate, or maybe that's the sandwich kind of style. It's going to take me a minute to figure this out. Probably have to find some, some Chinglish instructions, but that kind of a thing. So this is a 7-inch arm, um, and the one part of my whole rig that I do not have yet is props. And I've been waiting on that. I'm, I was planning on flying probably a 6-inch um, since... It seems like there's a lot of six inch props coming out right now. Um, I did get the seven inch frame, so down the road, might be able to try some different things. But uh, yeah, it sounds like six inch prop technology is advancing rapidly, thanks to the hype train. So nice blue standoffs here. Of course, if, 
if you know me at all, you know that I'm not going to stand for that. And I had to spring for an extra set of the purple standoffs. Yes, because everybody loves purple. At least I do. So, got a frame. That's a good foundation. I'll mess around with that a little bit more. Just kind of giving you an overview on all the things. Some sweet stickers, a bunch of battery straps, great stuff. Heard good things about iFlight. I mean, I know really wanted a Conasty frame, one of the one of the Cougars, but it sounds like the availability on those is pretty rough. All right, so let's just Rolling Rock from the glass line tanks of old Latrobe. So let's move through the rest of the plan I've got here for this. Working from the outside in. Um, so for the powertrain, I've picked up a set of these here. I don't know if you've seen these. They're the new hype. Got the light spec. Emax motors in the 2207 stator size. It's the coggy son of a gun there. I do like the stylings. The shiny tops are pretty cool. Decent length on the wires. I don't know if that would work for a 4-in-1 on a 7-inch frame. That's, that's a good question there. So if you line that up there, probably not going to be able to do a 7 inch. I don't know if you can see that. I mean, if we kind of line that up with the holes. Of course, I've got to build this sucker. It'd be tight to run an all-in-one. But that's all right, because I'm not doing an all-in-one. They do seem really cool, and I think once, once things have kind of settled out a little bit, I might start getting into that, if, especially if I'm going to do, you know, multiple quads just to make the builds quicker. But Right now, I want to have one quad that is durable and I can fix easy. So, what I did for the ESC was the uh, DYS BL Heli Arias. And these are a 32 bit ESC. Um, 32 bit, never used it before. Sounds like it has a few f cool features that you don't get on D Shot. Maybe there's some kind of telemetry feeding back from each ESC. Probably a bunch of features that I'm not going to use, but future-proofed, blah blah blah. They sound like they're fairly low on the noise. Um, let's see here, I thought I had one that's open. Let's give it a closer look. But uh, 35 amp, which should give me plenty of overhead for potentially running 5S down the road. Not sure about that, but uh, yeah, nice look at ESC. Nice long wires comes heat shrunk. So yeah, I've got, got those, got five of them, just cause that's how I roll. Got five of those motors, just in case I blow one of those up. But uh, so there's our powertrain from that side. Then moving on in, all that's gonna plug into the DYS F4 flight controller. I've used this uh, on, well, that's what I've got running on the Tyrant. Um, had pretty good luck with it so far. You know, it uh, it does have the, the pins to plug into a specific 4-in-1 ESC that I'm not gonna use. Um, but, you know, I've heard up and down on the reliability of this. I have had one of these die on me. Um, I believe it was like the gyro fried on it or got jarred by severe impact. I did bounce it down a whole mountain on rocks and it never was quite right after that. Um, started doing the just shooting straight up to the sky, um, doing all sorts of glitchy things. So I had to replace it, you know, one of them, but you know, it is what it is. It's F4, so it should have plenty of processor power, should be able to handle everything we need it to do. Um, I have yet to do all the, the co uh, computations to see if it has enough um, 
actual ports to run a GPS unit because that is the other part of this whole setup that I've not established yet. I'm interested in getting GPS on this because if you're flying out there, it'd be really nice to have a better pinpoint on where it goes down. Um, so that's that's going to be my next area of uh, investigation. But so there's the brains of the device. Scoot that over here. Um, then the next thing. This is a little bit of interesting hype here. So I've got that Mach 2 uh, Joshua Bardwell fanboy uh, piece of equipment here. Because um, I do love Joshua Bardwell. And he has done a lot of great things for the community. And he brought up this, this little uh, transmitter here. Brought this up on his channel. And it checked all of his boxes. All of the primary things that you want out of a transmitter. And uh, so I'll kind of reiterate all that. Basically, it has switchable power, 25, 200, 5 or 600, 800. It has all the, all the powers, all the juice. Um, and it has, uh, uh, well, it has uh, switchable channels. I believe it's a 40 channel setup. So it's got all the legal ones in the US. That's good. Um, and uh, one thing that he raved about was the fact that it has solder pads for all of your connections, which is nice because then you don't have a proprietary plastic connector that can get damaged um, for durability, repairability. That is a nice feature. Um, and the thing that really made uh, Joshua excited about it was the uh, the MMCX connector here. So it's not the little rinky-dink IPEX snap-on coaxial thing. It has a more authoritative click. And that clicks in like a son of a gun. Look at that. That sucker is in there. It looks robust. I'm sure it weighs a little more than IPEX. And I've heard from Trappy. Of course, Trappy is a... Uh, in our minds. Um, he mentioned that there might be some trade-offs. I'm not sure what those are, but I do like the connector. That is slick. Because um, I've had the IPEX connectors rip right off of VTXs before. I've had the, it, you know, it's, it, it was the weak spot. And after you snap and unsnap it a few times, they start getting loose and they pop off and you gotta hot glue them. And this is, this is nice. Of course, as you, you know, you may have heard there is a bit of controversy surrounding this VTX. It supports smart audio, which is, as we all know, a TBS protocol. Um, their fabulous Unify, you know, is the one that uses that. And I've run Unify. That's what's on my, uh, on my Tyrant. Um, love the Unify. I have had one kind of fry out on me. Don't know if it was from crashing. Don't know if it's just because it runs hot, but you know, stability on those is, is a little up for debate. Um, but this is using that protocol. And I bought it because I'm like, I love smart audio. It's fantastic. You can do everything right from your radio. Nothing wrong with that. You know, you can change your channel, all those things, great. Um, and I'm like, oh, perfect. You know, another option. You know, I'll, I'll spend 40 bucks on a Unify, but this is only, or 50 bucks, geez. And this was 30 bucks. Like, hey, that's pretty cool. And it's from Race Day Quads. From everything I've heard, a really good company. You know, I'm not, you know, down to just throw money at all the cloners. You know, I really do support people who are trying to invest in this hobby and trying to grow it and trying to create new technologies, you know. So I... I love Trappy. I think he's done fantastic things. I'm going to buy a lot of his shit in the future, as you'll see in a second. But, um, yeah, I bought it, you know, figuring, okay, I'm doing doing the good thing, getting the smart audio. It's a cool package. Great. Then, after I bought it, heard that there's this whole thing about this not supporting smart audio once Betaflight goes to version 3.3, which will probably happen next year. And I'm like, what the hell? So that's still up for debate. I mean, 
3.2 is what we got right now. Apparently this works fine on 3.2. I'm going to throw it on the quad. I'll let you know how that works out. Um, there has been some debate whether, uh, oh, I'm not sure, I can't remember his name from Race Day Quads. Uh, anyway, he was going to be dealing with it, whether it is providing a software update or something that'll make this thing work or sending out new ones if it doesn't work. So, you know, I've got a fair level of confidence. Um, you know, I'll, I'll uh, take it as it comes, but see how that sucker works. All right, so then moving on in from the VTX, I guess the next thing would be the camera. And this is some more beautiful, beautiful hype train right here. Oh, there she be. Okay, it is the Rotor Riot Run Cam version 2 in the cool, sexy silver. Yeah, you know, I've been using run cams. I've got the run cam too on my other quad. You know, really good, good things. Uh, I think that I ha may have crashed my other run cam a few too many times, and I've been getting this shake in the in the video, which um, doesn't show up on the HD video. I'm thinking the sensor may have gotten knocked loose, so may have beaten it up a little bit too much. I've heard this one has more epoxy holding the sensor in place. They give you the uh, the uh, two point one millimeter. I'm not sure. It's the GoPro lens. It's got the big, nice wide angle. That's not too fish eye. It's got the Rotorite approved presets on it. It's supposed to be a pretty good camera. So that's that's what I'm going to be throwing on the front of this thing. Moving on um, to antennas. Let's see what all we've got here. So and I've got the TBS Triumph. I'll try that sucker out. Uh, I've got a few others that I've been contemplating using. I've got the uh, the VAS Ion, which I've been flying with a bit. Um, does seem to have really good gain, good strong um, signal beam. I guess for uh, what they say is that for full acro flight where you might be going inverted or flying directly over yourself or some some situations this might not be a very great transmitter antenna because it has a very large null zone in the top of the bubble. I don't know if I have the diagram somewhere on the little red bubble that they show you. It goes in on the top. So if you aim the point of that thing directly towards your receiver antenna, you might get some dropouts on your video. I don't know. So whatever. I've got that. I've got the uh, Mad Mushroom, which I've been running on the on the uh, goggles, so that might be the option there. Um, yeah, I'm try it out. Uh, there's that sucker. The RX antenna situation is something that needs work, because right now I'm flying with some cheese ball Eosheens, and I don't have diversity, but got one of these suckers, the Crosshair uh, 10 dBIC. Um, so once I get my diversity reception, you know, set up, I'll be using this maybe with Mad Mushroom, maybe with the Ion, doing some combination here to uh, get the get the video back. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I broke it. Oh. My Mad Mushroom. It's got a crack in it. Shit. Might have to find another one of these little protectors on there. But anyway, so that's that's your video. Got that that whole thing taken care of. Now let's talk about the uh, receiver. Heat drinks. All right. So what we've got here is the ultimate hype. As far as long range is concerned, I'm sure you've all seen these before. That little sucker right there, super compact. TBS Crossfire Micro, got the bundle. So I've got this, which I haven't even opened yet. Let's see what we got in here. Come on. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This would be the 
micro receiver. And that thing is pretty, pretty freaking small. Yeah, the biggest part on it is the dang plugs, but uh, that's all the antennas are, huh? They're pretty small. Nothing too big there. I know I've, I've heard that there are some issues with the length of these that you might need to trim some millimeters off 15 millimeters total 7.5 per side or something like that um, you got to tune it to the right frequency if you put your your whole crossfire on the wrong frequency you get blasted by the cell phone so in europe it's nine something in the u.s it's eight something or vice versa Jeez, don't quote me on any of that but there's that oh they even give us, they give us two of the stock antennas. That's a beautiful thing, TBS, beautiful. Lots of plugs, connectors, all sorts of things that are going to be involved in this. And yeah, so we got our crossfire, got our frame, got our motors, got the light spec, got the 32-bit ESCs. Oh, got the White Krispies, China Hobby Line, 1500, 100C, whatever that means, but they were really cheap. Got them on the special, got like six of them for 100 bucks or less. Like, gosh, they're like really cheap. So, I'm gonna start it on 4S. We'll see, you know, see how things progress. Um, I'm pretty confident that these will run great on 5S. So will the ESCs. So, I mean, I've got that as an option down the road. I'm just going to see how the 4S goes, see if it matches my flying style. I mean, I'm not huge into, you know, massive acro, super crazy stuff. I mean, I'm really shooting for, you know, some flight time, some smooth footage, hopefully, if I can get all the tuning straight. Um, basically, just kind of going for that kind of an effect. I want it to be, you know, vistas, covering ground because we've got all of that we got all the space out here and uh yeah i'm pretty excited about this oh yeah standoffs all the standoffs the rubbery ones to make things not vibrate even got the stupid soft mount things that might maybe go under the motors to stop even more vibes so hopefully i can get things jello free looking sharp looking smooth and uh, that's got to do it for today. Um, I'll probably give you a few more episodes of, you know, the build as it progresses. I might dig into this frame right now and see if I can put some screws to carbon and make something actually look like a quad. But uh, until next time, happy flying. Uh, hope you learned something. I'll have some kind of a sign off eventually. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.